Welcome to another lecture of our machine learning playlist. Today we are going to try and answer a question that is learning feasible. So for that we have a bucket here. Suppose the bucket is full of red and green marbles and so now we need to find what is the probability of picking a red marble and what is the probability of picking a green marble. Suppose we take the probability of picking a red marble is mu and picking a green marble is 1 minus mu is obvious. We actually do not know what is the fraction of red and green marbles here. So then the probability of picking a red or green marble is, is always going to be unknown to us. So suppose how can we calculate that what is the value of this mu? What is the probability of picking a red marble? How can we calculate that? So then what is the approach we can use? So we can uh, pick capital N number of marbles independently as a sample and now we are going to check what is the fraction of red marbles in the sample we picked. So suppose the fraction of red marbles in the sample we picked is new. Okay. So is this new and mu uh, related? This value of new tells anything about the mu. What is this new? This is the fraction of red marbles in our sample. But this is the red marbles in our actual uh, infinite uh, set of marbles in the bucket. Okay. So can this uh, new tells anything about this mu? The answer is no. Obviously there can be what? The, the sample can be mostly uh, green because uh, suppose the sample is size 10 and there are 9 green marbles and 1 red marble. But the um, actual value or the actual bucket can be mostly red Okay, it can be mostly red, but suppose in the sample we pick, it is mostly green. It can happen, but in the larger view, we can say that yes, we can tell the value of new from this new. How can we tell that this new is likely be close to mu? Okay, this value of new that is uh, we are getting from the sample is likely to be close to mu. That is the actual value of red marbles probability. Okay, so see what uh, it is saying that in a big sample, okay, the sample size, okay, the sample size we picked independently should be very large. In a big sample, that is for a large capital N, the new is probably close to mu. New is probably close to mu. It is not saying that new is going to be exactly equals to mu, but the value of new is going to be close to mu. Close means what? It will be within epsilon. Within epsilon means the difference between nu and mu will be less than or equal to epsilon. Okay. So what is this? This is the tolerance of our system. That how much error we can tolerate. Now see. We can write this in a probabilistic way. Okay. So uh, suppose we are writing this P of something is less than equals to something. That means this probability of this thing happening should be less than something. So we uh, this thing is what this thing is go going to be something bad. Okay, this is something very bad event. So the probability of having a bad event is small. Less than equals to means what? This means this is small. This is going to be uh, less than some value. That means the probability of occurring this bad event should be small. Derive an equation or the derive an probability, but it is starting from here. So learn carefully the probability of occurring a bad event is small that means the probability of the bad event is less than equals to something we are going to derive these things here and also the things here but for now just remember this okay the probability of happening a bad event is less than equals to something so for the case what we are saying now what can be the bad event so we were saying for a large sample that new is going to be close to mu within the range should be within epsilon. So the bad event should be what? The bad event that mu is not close to mu. Okay. That means the absolute value of nu minus mu is greater than epsilon. The good event is what? That this value should be less than or equal to epsilon because that is tolerable. But when it is greater than epsilon, we cannot tolerate that much error. That means this is a bad event. Okay, so the probability of occurring this bad event that is nu is nu minus mu's absolute value is greater than epsilon that is our tolerance. Okay, so when the error is exceeding our tolerance, this is error nu minus mu the difference between nu and mu and when the to error is exceeding our tolerance that is a bad event. So the probability of occurring this bad event should be less than something for the learning to be feasible. Okay. So the, what is this something value? So this should be less than e to the power minus capital N. e to the power minus capital N. 
so what is this capital n that is the sample size so now i think you get something from here just forget the things written in blue color just focus on the blacks so e to the power minus capital n so we can say this n is the sample size okay so the more the n increases the less value we get here okay if the value of the sample size is very large then this total value is going to be very small then the probability of occurring bad events will be very small that means that that will be a good condition so see for a large sample size the probability of bad events will be very less okay for a large sample size this um, value is going to be very less that means the probability of bad events or uh, will be very less that means new is very likely to be close to mu when the n is very large okay but now here also we have something else along with the sample size we have epsilon square okay epsilon is what is epsilon is our tolerance okay so the more accurate sample okay the more accurate sample we want that means the less tolerance we have okay we have less tolerance means what less tolerance means we want the sample to be exactly accurate okay so that means our tolerance is very less this is going to have a very large impact and this is va this value this n's large n's value is going to be cancelled to a very small value and the probability of occurring bad events will be very large suppose the tolerance value the value of our tolerance the value of the tolerance of our system suppose it is 10 to the power suppose have a large value 10 to the power minus 6 sorry very small value 10 to the power minus 6 that is our tolerance we want our system to be appropriate and accurate to a very high degree that means we toler we tolerate very less errors so our tolerance decreased into a minus 6 then this epsilon is going to get squared here that means it is going to be 10 to the power minus 12 so no matter how much big a sample size we are going to take here this 10 to the power multi minus 12 is going to be multiplied with the sample size so this is going to be cancelled out and this is going to be become a very small number okay and this if this value becomes a very small number then this e to the power minus a very small number is going to be a very large value okay this whole thing is going to be a very large value this is because we are having a negative sign here so if this value is small then this whole value is going to be large then that is the probability of our occurring bad events the probability of occurring bad events is going to be very large that we do not want okay so if see here what is written here the more accurate system we want that is the less tolerant system we make our sample to be the probability of bad events okay our sample to be the probability of bad events increases okay so the, our probability of occurring bad events will be increasing if we have less tolerance if we have a very less tolerance that means what that means even the slightest uh, difference in nu and mu is going to be calculated as an error so that means the uh, probability of these errors happening or the bad events happening is going to be very high if this epsilon is less okay and uh, what we have in the end we have a 2 here and a 2 here okay that is our whole formula that is probability of the absolute value of nu minus mu greater than epsilon is less than or equals to 2 e to the power minus 2 epsilon square capital n i think i have already explained what all this value is this nu is the probability of occurring or the fraction of red marbles in the sample size this mu is the probability of picking a red marble or the fraction of red marble in the actual data set or the actual bean. This epsilon is the tolerance of our uh, learning algorithm. This uh, E, you, I think you already know this E and this epsilon is the tolerance I have already said you. This capital N is the sample size. So this whole equation or inequality is known as Hofding's inequality okay. and among all the values here this new is the only random thing because every time you pick a sample the value of new is going to be different for that sample okay and see there are then some notes from Hebding's inequality that is the inequality is valid for all values of capital n and epsilon that means it is valid for all sample size and tolerance we provide whatever sample size or tolerance we pick or we choose to use it is valid for all of them the more accuracy that is the smaller tolerance okay the value of the epsilon is small 
so the smaller the tolerance we want the larger the sample size we need okay because if we want a very very small tolerance that means this epsilon is very small then this epsilon square will be uh, more small then we need a very large value of capital n to cancel this small value of epsilon okay because in the end we want this value to be small so for that this value should be large so that means the, if this epsilon square is very small then we need to Con uh, cancel it with a very large value of capital N. Okay, so the uh, smaller tolerance need larger sample size. Okay, so the next thing is that the bound does not depend on mu. That is the bound. The bound does not depend on mu because the bound is all the, the bound is this side. So there is no mu in, inside here. Okay, because the mu is the thing we do not know. We want to know. Okay, that is the thing. Mu mu is the thing that we want to know. And if we use mu on the this side also, then uh, it will be pointless. Okay. And the last thing is that mu uh, is approximately equals to mu. Okay. That does not mean that mu should be approximately equals to mu, but we use what we use this thing okay we use this thing because what we got we got we got uh, new and we are going to trying to calculate mu from this new value okay because we have only our sample and we are trying to calculate mu from our samples value that is new okay how can we use this thing in our learning algorithm that is a probabilistic thing like in a bean marvels all this we understand but how can we use these beans and marvels in equality equation in our actual learning algorithm so for the bean we have unknown quantity that was mu but for our learning we have what we have our unknown function marvel x belongs to capital x that means uh, suppose we can say for a credit applicant this x is a uh, credit applicant okay this s is our input samples it means for a credit approval system we can say that x is a credit card applicant and this belongs to the capital x that is the whole input set suppose the green marbles is if my hypothesis gets it right and the red marbles are that my hypothesis gets it wrong if my hypothesis predicts the customers correctly that means if the, if it says it's good then the customer is good if it says it's bad then the customer is bad then it is green but if it predicts the customer wrongly then it is red okay so make simple as that so see what we have we have the same thing what we have learned in our first two videos that is unknown target function training examples or training sample from here this we are feeding this training sample to a learning algorithm we are also having a hypothesis set we are sent using this also in our learning algorithm and in the end we have our final hypothesis it is going to be g and this is going to be as uh, close possible as our target function okay so all of this is okay but see in the real world what is the uh, these training examples x1 x2 x3 so this x1 x2 x3 this all are these all random or in the real world there is a probability of a probability distribution working among them okay suppose if the probability of a person uh, being a good or bad is completely random or is there a, a probability distribution existing in the real world okay so obviously there is a probability distribution existing in the real world the probability of being a customer good or bad is already present in the real world we just don't know that but it is there there is a probability distribution present so this probability distribution p on the data set x is going to be added in our learning diagram okay we are going to add this here also why we are adding this probability distribution because they these uh, training examples are not random okay so what is this training example this is the sample size in what we were picking from the infinite data set the infinite data set is the real world but these training samples are the ones picked by company as a sample size to give us to test or train our algorithm okay that is the sample size but in the real world there is actually existing a probability distribution of this x to become a good or bad so now we understand that for one hypothesis we got this probability of uh, this same thing that is the hebdings inequality i'm not going to read it again and again okay so i think you already understand that okay so but this is doing what Th this is just showing that our chosen hypothesis is a good hypothesis or bad hypothesis but does we need only that we do not need to tell it that it is good or not we need it to choose which hypothesis is the best 
ओके बट इट डज नॉट गिव द बेस्ट हाइपोथिस इट जस्ट सेज दैट द हाइपोथिस विच चोज इज गुड और नॉट सो दिस इज ऑनली एप्लीकेबल फॉर अ सिंगल हाइपोथिस नाउ आई एम गोइंग टू मॉडिफाई दिस अ बिट सो नाउ सी वट इज दिस न्यू एंड म्यू तो दिस न्यू इज द इज द इन सैम्पल दिस इज द इन सैम्पल एर एंड दिस म्यू इज द आउट ऑफ सैम्पल एर ओके बिकॉज दिस वॉज वाट दिस वॉज द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ रेड मार्बल्स एंड द रेड मार्बल्स वर वाट द रेड मार्बल्स वर हाइपोथिस वॉज प्रिडिक्टिंग रॉन्ग सो दैट वॉज आवर रेड मार्बल सो द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ रेड मार्बल्स मीन प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ एरर्स सो द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ एरर्स इन सैम्पल दिस न्यू वॉज वाट दिस न्यू वॉज द प्रोबेबिलिटी ऑफ रेड मार्बल्स इन द सैम्पल वी पिक्ड ओके दैट मीन्स दैट द ट्रेनिंग डेटा प्रोवाइडेड टू आस सो दैट इज द इन सैम्पल एरर वी कैन ऑल्सो से so we write it like e in of h this h is the particular hypothesis for which we testing okay so that is the in sample error for the particular hypothesis h and this mu is what this mu is out of sample that is the actual data okay that is not the sample it is the uh, examples of outer world okay so we can say e out of h okay the are the out of sample errors of particular hypothesis h so this e in or e out depends on the hypothesis we choose okay for different hypothesis we choose our uh, errors uh, in the sample or in the uh, outside of the sample are going to be different okay so this uh, e in h or e out h is going uh, is different for different hypothesis so uh, this value is for particularly one hypothesis of uh, of finding out that the hypothesis is good or not so what if we choose Uh, different values for the m number of hypothesis so see for uh, hypothesis number 1 we choose uh, we have probability of we are replacing this new and mu with e in h and e out h so you have e in h1 minus e out h1 greater than equal to epsilon is 2 e this thing okay again we have same thing for e, uh, h1 h2 for up to h m number of hypothesis and what is the value of this m this va uh, value of this m is capital m there are total capital m number of hypothesis suppose this m is a finite value though we know that the number of hypothesis or the hypothesis set is infinite but for our help for our understanding for this particular lesson we are going to consider our hypothesis set to be a finite number and this value is capital m all this different hypothesis we have that our uh, probability of this bad conditions or the probability of this bad condition happening is less than 2 e to the power minus 2 epsilon square capital n okay so for e, h1 for h2 for h3 up to h m okay so there are capital m number of values from m equals to 1 to capital m so what will be the worst case the worst case scenario is that each of these is going to be less than the total value of this m hypothesis is okay so for a single error for a single hypothesis the error is this so for m number of hypothesis the value should be always less than equals to m into this okay see the worst case for, we are taking the worst case okay for h1 suppose it is less than uh, 10 suppose for h2 it is also less than 10 okay so suppose there are five such hypothesis we are taking so for five hypothesis we can say if they all are less than 10 so they are together less than 50 okay we can say this all together are less than 50 so each of them are less than 50 obviously if if they are less than 10 then they must be less than 50 also so we can say we write it like 5 into 10 we are just multiplying the number of hypothesis along with the error or the a bad conditions probability okay so the probability or the worst case possibility that is probability of e in g minus e out g greater than epsilon so the probability of bad event in a particular hypothesis that is our final hypothesis g is always going to be less than the summation of the probabilities of occurring bad conditions in every uh, one of the hypothesis okay it is obviously going to be less than the summation of probability of occurring bad events in all the possible uh, hypotheses it is obviously going to be less so what is the probability of occurring bad conditions in every possible uh, hypothesis it is 2 e to the power minus 2 epsilon square capital n so we are just replacing this whole thing with one because that is the thing we got from hebring's inequality okay because it is obviously going to be less than this 
ओके एब्सोल्यूट वैल्यू ऑफ ई एन जी माइनस ई आर जी बी इन ग्रेटर देन एफ सी एल एन इज ऑलवेज गोइंग टू बी लेस देन इक्वल्स टू समेशन ऑफ एम इक्वल्स टू वन टू कैपिटल एम टू ई टू दी पार माइनस टू एफ सेल एन स्क्वायर कैपिटल एन सो दिस थिंग आई थिंक यू ऑलरेडी नो बिकॉज इफ दिस इज लेस देन दिस एंड दिस इज लेस देन दिस देन दिस इज गोइंग टू बी लेस देन दिस ऑल्सो सी इफ टू इज लेस देन फाइव एंड फाइव इज लेस देन सेवन देन वी कैन से टू इज लेस देन सेवन So that is we are using here. This is less than this, and from Hebding's inequality, we know that this uh, this is less than this. So we can say this is also going to be less than this. So that is what we are writing here. And what is the summation of a equals to one to capital M two e to the minus two epsilon square capital N? That is we are having capital M numbers numbers of this thing. That means we are going to multiply this whole thing with capital M. So probability of absolute value of e in g minus e out g. Of becoming greater than epsilon is always going to be less than equals to two capital M e to the power minus two epsilon square capital M. All the terms I have already explained to you. This capital M is the number of hypotheses. Okay, that is the number of hypotheses in our hypothesis set. So, uh, for our particular example, what we are using here, this M's value is finite. Okay, we are not taking an infinite set of hypotheses. All the hypotheses in our hypothesis set, that is H one, H two up to H M. There is one hypothesis that is going to be our final hypothesis, and that is the best hypothesis we are going to choose. So that is going to be the hypothesis, final hypothesis G. So we want this thing to be a very small value. We want this whole thing to be a small value. Only then our learning is going to be feasible, or the probability of having error or bad condition is going to be less. Okay. So only uh, what are the conditions we need for this to be small? The value of m should be small. That is hypothesis state. The value of capital N or the sample size should be large, and the uh, value of epsilon should be large. That is tolerance should be large. 